When I think about what I do or, or what we do in the cattle business, you know, everything's connected. I don't think you can really be a good cattle person if you're not a good land person. And I don't think you can be a good land person unless you're being a good cattle person. I don't really separate those two things. When you're taking a bite of that burger or you're taking a bite of that steak, if it came off my place, then, then you're taking a little bit of my land with you. And, and I think that's really cool because when you take a bite and, and taste my ranch, well, that, that animal also gave a ton back to my ranch. It helped the grass grow. It helped with some species that had that animal not been there, otherwise may not have been here. Everything's connected. It's all intertwined. Quality beef um, can mean a lot of different things. You can think about quality beef as the eating experience, that I enjoy cutting my tenderloin with a fork, and that's quality, it tastes good. But I think quality beef can mean a lot more than that. It can mean about how that beef was raised. It can mean what that rancher had to do to produce that quality calf. It can mean, what was the life of that animal? Did everybody that's involved in the value chain um, contribute to not only the welfare of that animal, but to the quality of that beef through um, animal handling practices? I wouldn't consider myself a cowboy necessarily. Like, I would just sort of consider myself a steward of the land, steward of the animal, steward of the operation. You gotta have the financial aspect of it working, you gotta have the land aspect of it working, you gotta have the cattle health, husbandry aspect of it working, or else none of it really works. Wilson Cattle Company is a family operation. Six generations on this land means that a lot of people have put a lot of uh, sweat equity into it. I wanna make sure that I'm treating it the way that it should be treated feeding the world with what we do. I take a lot of that to heart. It's very unique to know that I am working the same ground that my ancestors from the 1800s worked. Hopefully what they passed along, they were able to improve on and, and hopefully what I leave has been improved from the time that I found it. I think that's kind of been the philosophy down the generations is, is constant improvement. I explain our ranch like it's a muscle. So you intensively graze this field right here, get it down to about a fist, and then you rotate it over. That allows the grass, the roots will go down, try to find water. We're basically working out this land to make it stronger. Just like you do push-ups or squats or bench press or anything. The ranch is a living organism and it should be treated as such. If you can smack it hard, get some of those microorganisms, fungi, and, and micronutrients uh, for the plants in there, view the manure, um, and sort of breaking up the sod with the, with the cloven hoofs of the animals, you'll really start to see that piece of ground uh, start to improve. You know, if it's going to be good for the little bugs in the soil, or it's going to be good for migratory birds, or it's gonna be good for some of the larger mammals, whether it be your elk, your deer, you know, even the rodents, then it is gonna be good for the cattle. Beef Northwest's relationship with Wilson cattle is symbiotic. It is very difficult for some people to come in and look at our company and try to understand where one starts and one ends. I believe that the quality of beef that comes out of Beef Northwest is directly related to the quality of people. It's a window into the company um, that goes with every aspect, be it environmental stewardship, animal health, animal performance, or just even the uh, consumer uh, eating aspect. It, uh, um, it is all tied together. It's like the hub of a wheel. One of the things that I think about when I think about sustainability is uh, creating relationships with ranchers and people that we can do business with year in and year out and uh, build some bench strength. A calf coming in for me is going to be black hided and going to be an animal that's got a year's life underneath them 
and has had two or three rounds of modified live vaccine. I like to have calves that come to the feed yard that they know what a feed bunk is and they know what a water tank is and they know how to use them. I like animals that have genetics that are pretty calm and don't get too excited. So that's kind of what they look like to me. We have 40,000 individual heartbeats that, that are relying on us to take care of them. They can't open the gate, get their own feed, and take care of themselves, so we've got to take care of them. So it just is about responsibility. You know, we're talking about animals that it takes us two or three years to, to get to a spot where we can actually put it on somebody's dinner plate. Messing it up by not having the appropriate animal handling is a shame, and so we focus a lot of energy just trying to make sure that uh, whether it's people afoot or horseback or truck drivers or even moving cattle through squeeze shoots that we're doing it right and not being out of line. By having that low stress environment, you know, we can keep them healthier and of course can make sure that, that carcass quality is high. The more that we can take care of the environment, the better opportunity there is for a better outcome for cattle, be it health or uh, performance, as well as quality. We want to be leaders and not followers in the environmental aspect of feeding. Technology for us is pretty key to what we do. It goes back to that old adage of if you're not growing, you're dying. Being able to accurately describe the amounts of inventory you have around here that we feed cattle is quite important. Just making sure we're taking care of the land and the environment, the water, utilizing byproducts that need consumed, not adding to waste around here. We aren't just taking something from the earth and creating a product for humans, we're truly recycling and being a part of a system. If we didn't have cattle, if we didn't feed cattle here, we would have so much potato waste in landfills. You know, if we didn't feed cattle here, we would have ranges across the United States that were overgrown or overrun or dead. Sustainability isn't just about the end product, it's about everything in between. A modern millennial rancher has to be a finance rancher, has to be a scientist, has to be a vet. I think as fun as John Wayne movies are, you cannot take a lot of that to heart when it comes to running your operation because if you want to fire off a six shooter and, and just drive the cattle into town, you're probably not gonna last that long because you're not gonna be taking care of the health of the animal, you're probably not gonna be taking care of the land the way you should. It's all cyclical in a system. If you're treating the environment the way that it should be treated, then the bottom line is gonna improve along with it.